Sup? Ah, it's nice. That's my Mr. Strong Mug. My sister brought me this and uh, my wife chipped it. See, I used to chip all the mugs that I have. I don't think they're pretty or flowery enough. But, hey. Right, today, what we're gonna talk about today, we're gonna to talk about how to do a proper push-up because a lot of you guys have been out there at the moment, you're doing home workouts and that's great, keeping fit, keeping active, um, but there's the right way and there's the wrong way to do a push-up and if you do it the wrong way, you're gonna end up with potentially giving yourself shoulder pain and potentially needing to come and see someone like me and that's difficult at the moment. So if we can give you, if I can give you all the tools to sort of prevent that from happening, then you're going to be in a better position and you're going to get better strength from doing push-ups in this way rather than um, the wrong way, shall we say. So what we'll do, we'll first look at the wrong way to do a push-up, then I'll show you the right way to do a push-up and then I'll show you the steps to get into the right way to do a push-up because a lot of people who have never done a push-up before then go and try and do a push-up and that's not going to work. So we need to build the strength up gradually and we'll go through those bits as well today so that you've got a really good idea of how to do it, where you should start and where we'll go with it. So first of all, doing them the wrong way. Most people get down, they have their hands really wide, they have their elbows 90 degrees up here and they're sort of pushing and you're really opening and exposing that ball and socket joint in your shoulder. The glenohumeral joint, it's a ball and socket joint. And when you're sort of right down, chest to the floor, arm back here, you're putting a lot of strain on the ligaments and the tendons that cross that joint and stabilize it. So if you imagine this is the ball, this is the socket, and what you're doing is you're doing that, and you're really sort of gapping and opening it, and all the force is coming through that area of the shoulder. We don't want that, because that increases your risk of tension, tendon injuries and ligament injuries, and they take ages to heal, and they're a real pain in the backside. So if we can avoid them, brilliant. So to do a push up the right way, you're gonna bring your hands a lot closer and you're gonna make sure that your elbows rub your sides as you come down and up. So hands nice and close, palms spread wide, and then you're gonna slowly control, making sure that your elbows rub past your body as you come down. This will work the chest, um, but it also work more of the shoulder muscles as well as you're doing the push up. So you're gonna be working all through the deltoid and it's gonna work a lot of the muscles around the scapula or the shoulder blade. And that's really, really important. Stability there will reduce the risk of any problems on the front or anterior part of your shoulder. So the stronger we can make the muscles around the shoulder blade, the more stable it is and the better movement you'll have and the less risk of injury you have. So. Hands nice, a bit closer, um, just wider than your chest. Elbows brushing your sides as you come down, nice and slow and controlled. Pause for a couple of seconds when you're at the bottom and then slow and control back up again. My rule of thumb with any body weight movement is you wanna count um, three to four seconds to come down, pause for two seconds and then three, four seconds to come back up again. Because if you're doing it that slowly, you're never letting momentum or gravity do any of the work for you. And when you use, if you rely on momentum or gravity, that is when injuries happen. Because that is when you're gonna take joints beyond their range of movement and strain ligaments, tendons and joint capsules. And that's definitely not what we want to happen. Other things to remember with the push-up is you need a tight core, you need to pull those stomach muscles in because if you start losing control on the anterior compartment of your stomach, so your stomach muscles, you're gonna dip your back and you're gonna give yourself lower back pain and that's gonna cause you loads of problems. So if you can't do um, a full straight like push-up with nice tight core, glutes engaged, nice sort of straight line through your back, then you're gonna injure yourself in other ways and that's not what we want, which is why we're now going to talk about the steps to getting to do the perfect push-up and i would suggest that everybody do these steps some of you may get through some of them quicker than others but if you start at the beginning and build the correct foundation you're going to be um, better in the long run the thing is here is it's it's taking your ego out of the equation um, we all just think oh no that's too easy i don't need to do that but actually if you start at the bottom, build the foundation and work all the way through, you're gonna be much, much better for like when you come to doing those push-ups later on. So my advice would be take your ego out of the equation, do your time, do the work properly, and you'll be so much stronger for it long term. So we're gonna start off 
with wall presses. So this is just basically doing a standing push up against the wall and anyone can do these. They are, they are a brilliant beginner workout. And if you do them like this, you're gonna build the foundation, you're gonna understand the movement. So, and you're gonna be much better further on. So hands and palms on the wall, just the chest height. Um, elbows, uh, not fully straight and slight bend in the elbow. And then I want you to go up onto your tiptoes so you bring yourself up slightly, feet together up onto your tiptoes and then just slowly lower yourself into the wall, pause for a couple of seconds and then slowly bring yourself back up again. You should feel it working in the chest, you should feel it working around your shoulder, around the scapula and working all of those muscles. Now there's different goals that can be had um, with resistance training. Um, if you're training for strength then I would suggest sitting between um, eight and ten reps for about three sets. If you're in training for endurance and like stamina then we want to bring the reps up more to like around sort of 16 to 20 reps um, but probably maybe do sort of less sets to start off with and then you can build them up more and more but if we're just if you're purely training for strength then i would say stick between eight and ten reps and about three sets just gonna have another it's nice oh it's good so once you've once you can do three sets of eight to ten, like ten reps of wall presses, then you are ready to move on to the next stage. And I'm, when I say once you can do them, I'm talking perfect form, nice, slow, and controlled. Remember those points at all times. So the next stage is uh, incline. So you want to use something like a banister or a worktop, or even like reaching up to like the third or fourth step on your stairs, depending, or the back of a sofa, something that's not going to move, something that's not going to like shift around, top of a chest of drawers, something like that. And you're going to place your hands on the edge of that surface. And you're going to take a few steps back with your feet. Once again, feet together, up on your tiptoes, and you're going to slowly lower yourself down into the press position. Same rules apply, nice and slow, nice and controlled. Don't let gravity do any of the work for you. Don't use momentum to do any of the work. And then you're going to pause and then slowly back up again. And we're going to progress up like that. And again, if you're, if you're working for strength, um, then we're going to do between 8 and 10 at 3 sets. If we're working for more endurance and stamina, then we're going to go more 16 to 20 reps on this. So it's up to you, depends what your goals are and where you want to be. So it's really that. So all we've done is we've just changed the angle. We've increased the load coming through the chest and the arms by bringing more body weight over the top of the point. You'll find that your hands finish slightly lower down, whereas they're finishing your chest before they're coming a little bit below the chest. That's fine, don't worry about that. That's not a problem. So once you've hit your target of those again, and again, that's sort of that, that three sets of 10 reps, once you can do those, then you can progress onto the next stage. Now we've got two options here. Some people will be able to go straight through to kneeling push-ups. Others might need to find a lower surface and then do them like, so drop down a little bit more and then do them like that before they progress to kneeling. Only you're gonna know that, so just try it. Try the kneeling ones. If they're too difficult, then bring yourself back up onto an incline, but less, a lot more of an incline than you were doing before. So there's two ways to do the kneeling. Um, some people prefer one, some people prefer the other. I have my favourites. We all have the favourites. So I yeah, just, I don't want it to get cold. Um, and what we're going to do with the kneeling is you're going to sort of, so we get into uh, on all fours on the floor and then you're going to put your knees together uh, again hands just wider than your body and following the rules of elbows brushing past your sides as you come down into the press position now you can either lift your feet up and use your knees as the pivot pivot point your hinge point and just lower yourself down from from there and with your feet tilting up and you're just using that pivot point on your knees again keeping a tight core all of these exercises you want to cut keep your stomach muscles nice and tight um, and lower down that way or if you find that's a bit too hard then we're going to use the knees and the hips as a pivot point so you're going to keep your feet on the floor and then you're going to move your body weight forward and down so you the knees are straightening out and your hips are straightening out as well and this is going to cause a, like a real flat and you can pretty much lay flat down to the floor like this and then bring yourself back up i wouldn't recommend going all that way down but you see how the the forces change slightly as we do this one. So try them both, see which one you feel more comfortable with, and then go with that one. 
Again, we're going to stick with the same rip range, the same speed and movement, same pauses, and building up to sort of th th either three sets of eight, eight to ten or sort of two sets of more sixteen to twenty. Now we can start doing the full push-ups. So once you've done the kneeling and you can do them, then we can start doing the full push-up. So. As I said to you before, at the beginning of this video, full push-up, we want tight core, tight stomach muscles, glutes engaged, nice straight line through our back and body, slowly lower ourselves down, hands just wider than our body, elbows rubbing past our body, and then pause, and then slowly back up again. Now, the, that is just the straightforward push-up. You can do variations of that, and um, if that's something people want to see, then I can go through that in another video later on. But today was really about just getting you doing proper push-ups with proper form that are gonna reduce the risk of injuring yourself and gonna mean that you're not gonna um, have problems in your shoulders and things like that later on. A Couple of things to remember is that um, if you've never done these before, it can put a lot of pressure on your wrist and that's another reason why I say to like work through the stages because it will reduce the pressure through your wrists because you'll build strength through your wrists and hand joints as you do them so you'll be in a better position when you come to do a full pull-up. If for any reason, if you have any old injuries or medical reasons why your wrist can't take that sort of load, then you can do them on with like a grip position. So um, you can get some little low parallel bars or um, like little grip holders and that allow you to hold in like a grip position. Or some people will even do the wall push-ups onto their knuckles as long as you've got no problems in your knuckles or you put a bit of padding between your knuckles and the wall, then you can do that as well. If you find that's better on your wrists, You've got to adapt this to what works for you. Everybody's different. We all have different requirements and it's just tweaking these things ever so slightly at times that will improve that and help with these things. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, please subscribe, leave comments. Let me know if there's any more information you want. If you think I've missed anything or you want to see certain other exercise tutorials, I'm happy to go through that. I come at them from an injury prevention point of view and that's where like, I think it can really help some of you guys out there at the moment. So let me know what you think. Please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.